In this video, we're going to look at three different ways of running Stream Deck software alongside Companion. There's either solo, simultaneously together, or independent of each other. If you've ever tried using Stream Deck software and Companion together, there are occasions where you find they might lock up or they're not responding. This is because the USB device is really a first come, first serve. Let's jump into Companion and I'll show you the difference. The simplest way to run Companion is just to plug it in and scan for a USB device. This requires the Companion server to be running on a Windows, Mac, or Pi. On my Mac, I can simply launch the app. It'll open in the taskbar here. And then when it's had a moment to boot, I'll say launch GUI, and it'll launch it in a local tab. Under the Surfaces page, if your Stream Deck is already plugged in when you're booting, it should show up. If it doesn't show up, then you'd need to go to Rescan USB. And in this instance, it's showing me my actual Stream Deck serial number. This is also where you can set up the brightness of your Stream Deck. You can set up whether you want it to be rotated vertically, and then you can set a page number in case you've got a home page that is not set to page one. The beauty of this mode is it doesn't require any of Stream Deck's native software. It's very stable. It's very simple. You just plug that in and away you go. This is the sort of route that you would go if you're plugging it into a Raspberry Pi. But what happens if I also want to run the Stream Deck software alongside Companion? Well, to do that, first I recommend quitting both apps and then start the Stream Deck app first. What this is going to do, as I said before, with first in first serve, this is going to grab the Stream Deck's USB and say the USB belongs to Stream Deck. And so now within Stream Deck, there's a companion plugin and that companion plugin can be dragged onto each button. Now, button nine, I've reserved as an actual Stream Deck button. If I press this, it'll take me to another profile. In my instance, it's changed it to companion settings. And I've also got a companion Chrome, companion Resolve, and a companion Zoom. But for the moment, I'm gonna jump back to the ATEM page. What you'll notice here is that it's all blank because companion hasn't been loaded up. The Stream Deck is trying to reach Companion, but there's nothing there. The Companion server is not open and not running. So let's fire that up and it will pop up here. And after a moment, the server will boot up and it will populate these buttons. Okay, so now Companion is running in the background and it's speaking with my ATEM Extreme and also my ATEM Pro at the same time on the same network. Now that it's loaded up, I can see more options under the button and you can see it's dynamic here. I prefer to leave the Stream Deck profile as a dynamic button because as I update these buttons, that will reflect in the Stream Deck software itself. If you wanted to, you can actually go in and instead of dynamic, you can set a page and a button number and then that will be solely dedicated to that. So for example, if I wanted to make this button the record button, I'd go over to companion and I know that on page 20 is my record streaming page. And this is my record button here, which is page 20, button 19. So if I jump back to Stream Deck, change this to button 19 and page 20, then the record button will show up there. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to drag on a new companion button and by default, it takes it back to what it is. So nice, very easy to build a page. So in this instance, we've plugged the Stream Deck into the computer and it's running the server, it's talking to the network, and it's talking to the ATEM. On my Stream Deck profile, I also have a phone version. So I'm gonna to go to DJXS, which is my iPhone XS. This can be done horizontally, but I prefer to use it vertically because it fits in the hand better. And this is what I've designed to be able to walk around a venue and change a few camera angles. It's not to switch an entire show, but it's something that is easy to get to and change that up. So within my companion profile, I've got four different profiles. I've got a 32 button extreme, a 32 button pro, a vertical pro and a vertical extreme. However, I need to be able to access that independently. So now we have the scenario where I don't want them running simultaneously. I actually want them running independently. The problem is because this is running via the companion plugin within the Stream Deck software, each time I update something on the phone, it's also updating it on the Stream Deck. For example, if I'm pressing buttons on the actual 32 button Stream Deck, it's updating the phone as well, and the phone is also updating the Stream Deck. The reason that these are running in sync is because under services, Companion can only see the Stream Deck plugin. It's not actually seeing the Stream Deck itself. The Stream Deck software is controlling the Stream Deck hardware, and Companion is just a server running in the background that the Stream Deck software is speaking to. Are you confused yet? All right, don't be, we'll get there. If I try to get Companion to rescan for USB, 
nothing's happening because the Stream Deck software still has control of the USB connection. So what we need to do is to start by quitting Stream Deck and that will release that connection. It's also killed the phone. So now I can rescan USB and this has discovered the serial number for the Elgato Stream Deck XL device. And you'll notice the difference here is that my logo here is showing up. So this is running natively to Companion. This is not running through Stream Deck anymore. This button is now one that I've set up within Companion to jump between controlling the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini Extreme, two switches from the one interface. But I also want to run through the phone as well. So to do that, I'm going to come back over to Stream Deck start that up and start up my Stream Deck app again. So if we go back to Companion, to the Surfaces page, this is where you'll see these two devices. You'll see number zero is the plugin. So that is referring to Companion's actual plugin. If I type in here, this Companion button plugin. And then my individual serial number for the Stream Deck is this one that's showing up here. My phone's going to be on page one of Companion, but if I hit the menu button, I can jump through to the vertical profile, X out of that. And then now when I switch profiles, I'll switch between controlling the ATEM Mini and the ATEM Mini Extreme. You'll notice that the 32 button Stream Deck is not updating. So as I'm changing the 32 button, the phone is not updating and these are running separately, which is great. So now this is my ideal setup because I can have this on the desk for all of the show switching. And then if I want to do something where I run around the room, I can take my phone and that's got a sort of a light version of my switcher, which I can then just like change a few inputs, run a few macros, that kind of thing. If you're wondering where my switches are at the moment, the ATEM Mini Extreme is actually sitting on a tray on top of the ATEM Mini Pro rig that I showed in previous videos. And this is one of the great things about Companion is that I can take my switching console, make it very small, I can put it into a phone and I can separate that from all of the connections that are going on with the ATEM Mini itself. And I just keep this tidy and lots of space. So that's a quick look at how you run Companion and Stream Deck either together or separately. If you have any questions, write them in the comments below. And if you'd like to find out more about these profiles that I have to control the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini Extreme, you can go to my website, davidjoshuaford.com companion, where you'll find all the details. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.